One, well, the conventional class of it was won by the 332nd Fighter Group, which at the time, May of 49, they were still segregated. Uh -huh. um, one of the pilots, one of the primary pilots, is the one that I honor on the on the past on the driver's side, Harry Stewart, right. who just turned 98 on the 4th of July. He was he was number seven out of 36 individual scores. The uh, the 332nd topped all of the conventional class groups, and I mean they were the top score out of everybody, even though there was conventional class and and jet class. Harry and James Harvey, who is in uh, Denver, they were somewhere a number of years ago when someone hollered, hey, you guys are the first top dog. So since then, they've been running with it, yeah, you know, labeling themselves as the first top guns. James Harvey even signed, well, actually, both James and, uh, and uh, Harry signed the hood, first top gun. So yeah, you can see the A just in this one right here. Yeah, right here. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, some of them um, I got before I started putting that Mylar over top of it, so they started to fade. Right. Um, but yeah, you know, every time I meet an original airman, and, and actually you talk about Charles McGee, um, funny story about him is that uh, I stole his signature and Benjamin O. Davis' signature from online uh -huh. when I digitized this. Uh -huh. appropriated. And then, uh, yeah, appropriated. appropriated, that's it. That's, that's it, appropriated. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, when I first met him, or when I finally met him down in, in Atlanta Warbird uh, weekend, which was in 2017, right. I told him, and I brought him over to the car, and I, I showed him, and he, he laughed a little bit. So he signed it again, and he, he signed second chance. <laughs> and then actually signed it, yeah, but his right. signature kind of faded away. So, yeah. our second time around, I think that's what he put. Yeah, but that's funny. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, I have to get a picture of this with uh, kitten. Oh yes, oh, definitely. Kitten. Uh, I, I think when we go back, the word's gonna be out. <laughs> <laughs> now, now on that particular weekend, Labor Day weekend, though, we've been invited down to. Montgomery, Alabama for the uh, second annual Boeing Red Tail Classic football game. Right. They're going to have us set up in the Fan Fest yeah. next to the Boeing 10 actually. Awesome. Um, so, you know, that'll be a lot of fun and out, uh, more outreach opportunities. And that's what the, the, the car is about is outreach opportunities to continue to, you know, propagate the history. And well, as soon as I get the date, uh, when the unveil will be at the Heritage Center in February, I'll let you know. That'll work. My guess is it will be in early February. Okay. Or it might be on the actual day that they commemorate Black History Month. I'm not sure. Okay. But. Uh, and that will be in Kansas City? No, or in Vegas? that will be in Vegas. In Vegas, Shelby okay. Vegas. Yeah. It'll be in the, in the Heritage Center. Okay. So, All righty. And in the so meantime, no no snow in Vegas. No, no. It'd be a great place to be in February. Yeah, that is that's true. Well, I did experience it's it once. I'm gonna open my mouth where I shouldn't open it out, but there are Shelby connections here. <laughs> in the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, 2018, uh -huh. uh, Tuskegee Airmen, we had a national convention in Las Vegas. Wow. So me and one of the other members, my buddy Eric Love. We took the opportunity to, to cruise this across Route 66, hit uh, hit Grand Canyon in Arizona, and then over to to Las Vegas. So, so. Hit Joplin in Missouri. Yep. Kansas. Uh, it's in the Four Corner area there. Yeah. Yeah. And then Oklahoma. Boy, you get into Tulsa. There's some cool stuff. Going yeah. Tulsa. Yeah. It got some good. So I set up an itinerary of specific places I wanted to stop, and you know, if there was highway in between, we hit I-40 and and oh, jumped yeah. on the highway, right. but. For the most part, we you know we did as much of, of 66 as, as was possible. And when we passed the state line, we got out, put a sticker on the car, put the date and time. And so were there four wings? There were there were four fighter groups. Okay. The 99th fighter group went over originally. They went over early, um, and then the 332nd came over with the 100, the 301st, and the 302nd. And the, they, they eventually attached the 99th to the 332nd. And which one was McGee in? 
Um, he was in the 302nd. He was in the 302nd. Yep. In today's world, how many do you think are actually living, still living? Or... I would, uh, I guess somewhere between 100 and 200. Now, oh, this is was considered Tuskegee Airmen. There were over 50, there were approximately 15,000 people that were part of that that experiment slash experience. Right. Um, only 992 to 1,007 pilots that were trained. 355 single engine pilots went overseas and mm -hmm. served in combat. Now, out of those 355 that served in combat, there's only five that are living now right. since since Alex passed back in June. Um, also part, I mean. Oh yeah, everybody, every, every, everybody that was. There, everyone was African American. In well, the well. Um, there were some, I gotta turn my lights off here. There were some um, some whites in command. Mm -hmm. We had five, four or five Haitian pilots and there was one Chinese pilot. But everybody else throughout that whole experience, for the most part, the majority of them were African American or I should say, for the most part, they were, they were mostly non-white males. Um, but like I say, in, in some of the command structure, like the 477th Bombardment Group, the reason why, you know, they have not received the recognition because they didn't serve in combat because their commander was a guy by the name of Bob Selway, strict segregationist. Bob Selway was the commander of the 99th initially. He wanted it to fail. He tried real hard for it to fail. They moved him but they made him commander of the 477. The 477 was flying B-25s. They were stationed at Selfridge. And they were supposed to go to the Pacific to, uh, to serve. Um, their issues came when the guys wanted to get into the officers club at Selfridge. They automatically paid a fee out of their, their paycheck for the officers club. And not only was Selway a segregationist, but the base commander at Selfridge was also. And both of them told him flat out that as long as there's black officers and white officers on base, there'll be no integration. Um, they raised a fuss. They eventually moved him out of Selfridge um, to Alpena, to Oscoda. They ended up down in, um, in Godman Field in Kentucky and also Freeman Field, Indiana where an incident happened and uh, one guy named Roger Terry uh, got arrested. What the guys would do is three or four of them at a time would dress in their best and try to get into the officers club and be denied and then another group would come up and they would do that all night long. It was the beginnings of the civil rights movement of a silent protest, a nonviolent protest and this was 45, um, 44, 45. So, um, he was walking by the MP and, and kind of lightly brushed against him. So him and the other two guys that he were with were arrested and charged with jostling. But what the, what the base commander tried to do was, um, he wrote a memorandum of understanding, 101 officers on base, and wanted these guys to sign off on this memorandum of understanding stating that they were trainees and they would go to one club and the white officers were instructors they would go to the actual uh, officers club and none of them signed it. Coleman Young was on that list of 101. He was a navigator bomber deal with the 477. They put the guys in arresting quarters and they were going to court martial them for treason and the NAACP got involved with, uh, with um, um, Thurgood Marshall and, and got them off. But yeah they you know, and that's how the 99 started off, like I say, with Bob Selway. There were, there were forces within the Air Force Command or within the Army Command, Army Air, uh, Air Corps Command, that wanted to see it fail. There were forces that wanted to see it succeed. No Parrish was a commander of Tuskegee Army Airfield down in, in Alabama, and he wanted to see it succeed. So at that point in time is when things started to get pushed forward. And the only thing that kind of saved the 99th, they were initially assigned to one fighter group whose commander didn't want them to succeed. Um, so he'd send them out on bogus missions, nothing to do, send back reports that these guys don't know what they're doing. And um, 
they moved them to another group, fighter group, whose commander was more liberal, started sending them out on integrated missions. These guys started to show their stuff. Matter of fact, they were having so much fun, or they were having a prosperous time, I guess I should say, when they were, when they were amongst these integrated units being allowed an opportunity. And when the 332nd did come over, they fought being connected or, or joined with the 332nd. They wanted to stay on their own as an individual unit. But, um, you know, Army Air Corps said, well, we got a segregated fighter group now, so that's where you guys are going. But that was closer, more so closer to the end of the war, late 44 into 45. I am really impressed with the knowledge that you have. <laughs> <I> really, <laughs> because we kind of come second nature going and learn. Uh, step. Um, but yeah, we're going to take this back. This is my contact card. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Get it out. I see you here. I haven't seen you since Charlotte. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Charlotte was far. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's got my cell number. Can't say that's got my um, email, my private email. Okay. All righty. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to take this back, have a little conference. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> we got That'll time. work. I, I mean, appreciate it. My mind's it. already spinning with it. I, I, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Because yeah. that's, that's, that's what we're about is, is outreach. On this uh, trip to Montgomery, um, besides that, afterwards on Monday, my wife is coming. We're going to go down to uh, Pensacola and spend mm -hmm. some time on the beach. But you know, yeah. that's okay. that's his area. So well, I've totally forgot about he. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. many other cars have you seen <laughs> that are painted up like P51s that not necessarily to see, but other ones that have I seen? Yeah. Um, there's a. Uh, I mean, besides the Roush versions of P51s, they did. Uh, who was it? Um, was it Roush that was involved with that? I think it was well, Roush that yeah. was involved your, in the... Your vehicle's a specific pilot, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, mine are, are two specific pilots. The other pilot. ones are generic. And, and I got one, I got an idea yes, one of a specific yeah. pilot yeah. That, that was from Detroit. Yeah. And, and on his, on the side panel of his, he, he named his aircraft Detroit well, Miss. <laughs> and it, was, it was a red bomb. I think I see that. Detroit miss. He had a yellow front, yellow tail. Yeah, he. And he was 41. Okay. He had number 41 on his. Okay. Or, I think I was 41. Yeah. But, um, he was. He was probably if yellow tail. I think that was a 52nd fighter group. Was, uh, his name was Urban Drew. Okay. And, and Urban was in that's a That's a. That's a. That's a good idea and a good thought. And he. Um, Took down, well, I, I mentioned you earlier, but he took down two ME-262 jets. Okay, in one, in one mission. And he was the only person to get the flying uh, Air Force flying cross. Wow. In World War II. Wow. And I think he got it after the war, uh, but, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Something else. And he, any picture of you by the car? Oh yeah. After Germany, he went, he went to the. Let me Pacific let me just. Uh, oh really? <laughs> All righty, all righty. One or two that I've seen that maybe have a representation gentlemen the gym in different areas is that nobody's ever presented like right. you just did here to yeah. us. Yeah. The story. And I mean, that, that's what I'm kind of overwhelmed with. Yeah. And I my statement. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot here. There's yeah. Lot. So, yeah, it's a wrap. Yeah. It's a wrap. Okay. It's a wrap. I originally wanted to get it painted. Washington Community College was volunteering to paint it, but they would have the car for a year. Yeah, and this was 2017, and I, you know, I, I had events coming up that <laughs> I need to be at, so I just designed the wrap, and and it took them three or four days at Fast Signs to wrap it, and they've been going since then. And I figure, you know, my whatever next iteration of something like this will be, I'll probably invest in getting it wrapped. That's if the organization has the money, because like I say, we're all based on individual donations. And is, that a, is that a lanyard, uh, or is that a uh, bomb site right there? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> that big, that it big could screen be. has your it bomb could be. site? <laughs> that's, uh, that's, I just put that in there. The uh, 
Android, Android uh, radio. Um, Say, and then got, I got to push. I got to push. Crosshairs on it like this. Yeah, I should. <laughs> I got to push. I got a push button start that I'm gonna put in the uh, where the cigarette lighter yeah, is. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get all that done before I go down to uh, Montgomery. I'm gonna pull that green wrap off of the off of the dash and I'm gonna actually paint it OD green. So is the the wrap just didn't come out good, especially around the radio. It didn't come out too good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, is that new? Oh, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Oh, wow. Okay. All righty. You got, you, got, you, got, you got a job that I wish I would have had. <laughs> oh, no, oh, my God. Wow. Well, I met, yeah. um, let's see, how do you call them? Your colleagues in the military, the Mount Ford. Oh, Point oh, Mount Marines. Point Marines. Yeah, yes, the Mount Point Marines. I got a Marines. chance to meet them and actually, the actual, um, I forgot the, the, the last three survivors. I got a chance to meet them. Okay. And they also <laughs> inducted me uh, with a lifetime membership. Okay. Because, is that okay. The, the, um, the person who's over it is um, Commander is it, um, is it Middleton? Robert. Okay, Robert, okay, so. Um, Middleton. Yeah, Robert Middleton. Yes. Yep, yep. Oh, there's, wow. <laughs> there's two, uh, there's two, um, 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 Mount for Point Marine organizations here locally, just like there's two Tuskegee Airmen chapters here locally wow. also. Wow. And we do some things with those guys, their dinners and whatnot. The last few years, two, three years, has been kind of slow because of the COVID and whatnot. Wow. Are those lights down there? Yes, they are positional lights. As a matter of fact, I just turned them off, but check it out. So, so like uh, navigational lights, so like, um, so like airplanes or, or boats. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. I stole that idea from a guy at a car show who had a 1970 Mustang that he stripped down and literally, 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 merged with uh, some parts from a, a B-25 and a P-51. The interior was a cockpit of a B-25. The stick shift was actually from a P-51. Huh. And it, where his fog lights used to be in the grill, he pulled those out and actually had two 50 millimeter cannons coming out of the, uh, the lower fascia. And he had that hooked up to a to an air compressor when he turned that compressor on and the guy squeezed the trigger, he <laughs> go right at that, that. <laughs> so yeah, I stole that idea. I'll, I'll admit that, but. Did you get the people you talk about the sign on the hood? Oh, yes. Yes. So, so yeah, as well, the two that are featured on the car, Harry and, and Alex, um, they've signed uh, Alex is up front, Harry is on that side, but also I had their signature oh, wow. digitally. When I first joined the chapter, I was the editor and publisher the same night they made me the editor and publisher of the newsletter. <laughs> and what I did was um, I had all of our original Tuskegee Airmen sign a white sheet of paper. I scanned it, made a JPEG of their signatures, and I integrated it into this certificate of appreciation that we still give away. And uh, when I designed this wrap in 2017, I knew I was going to use that green area for signatures, mm -hmm. and I started with theirs. That's awesome. So yeah. they're not just signed with a Sharpie on there. Those are actually yeah. printed on. Yeah, yeah. The ones that are in the ditch are actually printed on. That's what cool. I what I should have did, and is is afterthought now, was that when I had others that I met, when I had them sign the hood. I should have had them sign a white sheet of paper also mm -hmm. so that I could scan and JPEG their signatures and have it digitally because some of them are, are fading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of them are fading. But, but it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Telling a story. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, and then talking to Gil Halderman, I, I get an opportunity to tell somewhat of a story of the Mustang also. Yeah. Because a lot of people think that, uh, you know, the production Mustang was named after the P-51, and that's not necessarily the case. It was the the prototype from 62-63 that was named after the P-51, and the 
production got its name regular way all other cars get their name it just so happens that mustang mustang was it mustang is it i give you my card all righty all righty have you back here at the hawk that'll work that'll work working on the african hey how you doing okay so all righty a nice nice feature that'll work that'll work That'll right. work. I That'll definitely work. Is the is the museum open for us to walk through? Or? It is. There's lectures going on, and there's a you have to pay for the no. pass thing. No, oh. we don't. Oh, okay. Oh. Sure Moxer. Sure. Make sure. Um, All right. The gentleman said if they tell you you have to pay, tell them. Come get you. All right. All right. All right. Okay, we'll bring Emily. All righty. Thank you. How are you doing today? Not too bad. How are you? I can't You're complain. From South Carolina. I do. <laughs> it's I do. I do. It's Cynthia. Mm. I know. I'm doing yeah. names all the time. Eric. Eric. Yes. See? Thank you. My husband yeah. said the P51 from uh, Myrtle Beach is here. <laughs> oh, I'll go say hello. There you go. Thank you. So we're we're heading back down to yeah. Yeah. Montgomery um, Labor Day weekend. For the Red Tail Classic, the Boring Red Tail Classic yeah. will participate in their fan fest. It will be set up next to the Boeing tent. So what we're doing is just reaching out to people and asking for, you know, some support to get down there. Three ways of donating: Zelle, Cash App, and Venmo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All righty. Thank you. <laughs> I'll just they got speakers in there. Or? Yeah, as a matter of fact, they do. I forgot about that. That's probably where Johnny Clore is at. I'm going to go around and take some pictures and then go in there and cool off. Okay, we'll see you in there. All righty, all righty. This is really nice. I like your car. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Let me give you uh, a couple of cards here. Did you get one of these also? Let me give you one of those because these are... Yes. That's my very first card, and on that one is both of the Red Tail Pilots that I honor. Oh, nice. Um, nice. Uh, Harry Stewart on this side, who just turned 98 on the 4th of July. He was, uh, they showed him on, the, on Channel 4 on the 4th of July. And then on the opposite side is Alexander Jefferson. Born and raised in Detroit, came back, worked for Detroit Public Schools. Um, Alex turned 100 last November, oh but unfortunately he passed away. He passed away, there's a wasp, there was a wasp oh, behind geez. you. Uh, unfortunately he passed away on the 22nd of June of this year. Okay. So the week that um, uh, the news was shown, was, was, they started off covering Harry's birthday, um, they ended the week covering uh, Alex's services. Okay. He was in state, uh, they had him laying in state uh, at the Charles H. Wright on Thursday. Okay. And then um, Friday, funeral home, and then Saturday was the, was the funeral itself. So, a couple of guys I've known since the mid-2000s, and I had seen that, you know, others had actual P-51 airplanes that were mimicking their plane and I told them two guys you know um, I want to make sure you got your flowers while you're living so when I got this car I wanted to honor them. How long, how long has, did it take you to uh, get all the graphics? Yeah I um I, I hate flying insects and I'm I'm so much concentrating <laughs> on that thing. I want to get him. I want to get him so bad. Oh, yeah, um, I bought it. Yeah. One time I got stung by one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It hit me bad. Just, you I, must just be sweet as honey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that thing stung me bad. I bought the. I bought it in February 2017. It's a 2011. Um, out in Grand Rapids, and I was looking for months. For one, okay. I specifically wanted a convertible manual. Um, I was thinking of a silver one to put graphics on, opposite of what I did. But when I found this red one just in Grand Rapids, I grabbed it, um, and then I took time to design the wrap. I used Adobe Illustrator, and with my limited skill set, I designed the wrap and reached out to Fast Signs and Fast Signs. I was surprised that they wrap vehicles. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So I, I reached out to them and I like interacting with a business that you could do everything online, you okay. know. So they allowed me to upload the file 
and then uh, gave me a, gave me an estimate. Okay. And they were right there down the street from me. Okay. They're in Auburn Hills, so um, I finally got it wrapped in, in June. Yeah, that's the latest thing that, you know, especially if you have all types of graphics in there. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I figured. If I would design it and have it wrapped, I could get more intricate and more, you know, more into the uh, graphics that I was going to put on it. Okay, yeah. you're, you're gonna be here during the closing. Yeah, I am. Okay. I am. Okay, I'm, I'm about, about to go inside now and cool off for a little okay. bit. We can see this now. Look at that big huge. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not Damn, this this is me right here. This is freaking me. <laughs> but I would say your best area is going to be the old and the higher. Get Dasty's good side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just getting some right now. I come back and get some more detail later. <laughs> Seven up my thing. Limited edition. <laughs> Ten horse. <laughs> yeah. Just paint the liner, baby. Just paint the liner. Johnny Clear said 130, we'll go inside. Alright. That'd be beautiful. See my license plate border? Go check out my license plate. We'll get a kick out of that. <laughs> Where you find that at? I'm a member. Are you? I'm a firewood. Okay. <laughs> you, know Are you, you know what that stands for, right, Fireboy? Yeah, I'm going to get some footage here of the cars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing today? I'm good. I'm really sorry. All right. How you doing today? Here, let me give you a card. Give you all three here. Yeah, 
Oh, there you go. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. All right, let me let me get you too. Um, so what you got in your hand? Um, the one card is was my original card, and uh, it Thank has you, it has pictures of the two red tail pilots that I honor on it. Um, Alexander Jefferson and and Harry Stewart. Alex passed away in June. He was 100 years old when he oh, passed. Really? He turned 100 in November. Oh. Yeah. And then also, we're going down to the Boeing Red Tail Classic football game in Montgomery on uh, Labor Day weekend. So the postcard is just, you know, reaching out. There's three different ways one can contribute to help us get down there okay. through Zelle, Cash Flow, and uh, okay. Cash App and Venmo. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Yeah, so this is my retirement vehicle. <laughs> nice chair. How you doing today? <laughs> I didn't even realize where he was. <laughs> Very charming man. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah, that's really funny. funny. That's funny. I thought you'd like that little personal story. Yeah. Yeah, Coleman, he was a member of the 477th Bombardment Group, which was, uh, hey, what's happening? Which was uh, stationed at Selfridge. Yeah. There, they had some issues with segregationist leadership throughout the 477th and mm. all they ask for is they're paying to go to the officers club they like to be able to go to the officers club but there was resistance on that integration that's total bullshit right? yeah yeah they're putting you know? their lives on the line like right. everybody else right uh, you know well I, I grew up in Toro, Indiana and I was two blocks from the ghetto and I, my friends were black friends, yeah. full-blooded Indians, mm -hmm. Jewish, a little bit of everything. I mean, we were all friends. We're you know, and, and you know, you're, you're you're pointing at a very poignant point: the fact that integration is a positive thing. It's a beautiful thing because, as a globe, all right now, all right now. As a, as a globe, I mean, the global community is an integrated community. Everybody needs to learn from everybody else. Everybody needs to recognize others. Everybody needs to realize that no one is better than anyone else. No one race is better than one race, uh, another race. And I'm quite sure, I growing up, up, you- I grew up until I was 12 years old in mm -hmm. community, okay? And I mean, my parents moved back to Jerusalem. Back to Dearborn, I was like, what's wrong here? But here's, what, here's what affected me my whole life. I ended up working all over the world. Uh, I, worked, I worked in Russia, I worked in Africa, I worked in Asia, and you know, people are just people. Everywhere yeah, people are just world. people. Yeah. And so, that, that, my little, you know, from born to 12 years old, that yeah. experience. Set you up for the rest of your life. Yeah, and it was a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. People are people are people, and the thing is, is that you can run into a moron, an idiot, or oh, or, yeah. or an imbecile of any, any race, creed, yeah. any color, creed. Yeah, you know, sure. they, dumb. Yeah, yeah, you know, they're not just restricted to to one race of people. So, yeah. you know, it's it's quite amusing. I'm I'm just we baffled had, that I got two recognitions. We had people down the street from us, Hungarians, mm -hmm. the gypsy type. Mm -hmm. that used to, I said, God forbid if they're related to me. And they said, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, wow. I got my grandmother's maiden name. Uh -oh. And I says, I would never <laughs> want to know. You know. Well, but now let me ask you this. Have you, have you done any of the, the DNA 
stuff like on Ancestry. Okay, and what did he find? <laughs> um, mostly Eastern European. Okay, mostly doesn't that include are, Hungary? Yeah, that's Hungary and uh, Slovak. And then we're a little white Russian, but we have a little bit of Arabic and a little bit of Spanish. Uh, okay, yeah. So yeah, you, 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 you never know. And that's the thing is that the, the mixing of DNA has been happening since the beginning of time. You know, and there's no one person that's purely one thing, you know? To this day, I live in a total neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just a condo right by Ford Road headquarters. Okay. And I mean, there's, basically there's, there's people from all, all over the world. Yeah. There because a lot of them were associated with Ford or with local businesses. Yeah, and international it's, employees it's, and it's, things. It's a great neighborhood. Yeah. Everybody smiles and waves. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, the yeah. all the Tuskegee guys gone now. The, out of the 15,000 or so that was part of that experience, there are roughly a, a, a hundred to two hundred still living. There were 355 pilots, single engine pilots that served in combat. There's only five living. Alex was the last one to pass back in June. He turned 100 in November. <laughs> I and, met two uh, of them at one of the air shows. Locally? Yeah, over at... Um, over at Willow Run. Willow Run. Run yeah. And I got to shake their hands and they gave me their autographs. What year was this? Uh, this was maybe 15, 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Okay, so it, it could have been back anybody. Back. Yeah, yeah. Because we had, like, if you look at my hood, um, in, the, in the ditches there are um, guys that were in the chapter when I joined in the mid-2000s. And I want to say we had upwards of 20 to 25 original airmen at that time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, at that time, it could, it, it, it could have been anybody, but our chapter, I think we're down to, um, well, Harry, and a guy by the name of Russell Nall, of course, who we haven't heard from in a while, but, you know, yeah, I mean. To me, when I ever I meet these guys, I always say, you are the truest, truest, you are the greatest yeah. generation. Yeah. There's nobody like yeah. these people. Yeah. The World War II generation, yes. it, it definitely is. But then these guys and the other segregated units, not only was they fighting the fascism overseas, but the racism back home. Yeah. And unfortunately, they came back home to continued racism. You know, that's the sad part. Yeah. That's the sad yeah. part. Because I watched that Olympics. Mm -hmm. Jesse Owens just kicked their ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I got to meet him. Oh really? I shook his hand, and it was like, oh my. God. Wow. <laughs> no, I was at, I'm at like uh, a show downtown. It was either like one of the auto shows. It was Al Kaline, Gordy Howe. Oh wow. Jesse Owens, and then Rob Labor from Tennis, and they all gave pictures signed, and he stood there and he shook all their hands. Wow. Like, oh God, well, like I'm about to go in here and do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Alrighty, guys. Thing, COVID proved that we're not. <laughs> Right. It got everybody. It got everybody. It got, the world. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see. I don't know if they're in order. That, that one. There we go. Alrighty. Can I get you to sign these two also? Alrighty. Thank you. I don't know. Yeah, I got two of them. I don't know who gave them to me, but it's a beautiful thing. This <laughs> is so I, I can grab those. All righty. All righty. This one, which one was his? Oh, that's his. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
Uh, it was a Tuskegee Airmen Tribute Vehicle, Red Tail. The, the Tuskegee Airmen Tribute Vehicle, Red Tail. Yeah, sitting right here. Yep. Thank you. Really small team. Now, which which one of these was yours? There you go. <laughs> That's one of the ones that my very first car was a 75. My very first car was a 75. Yeah. Did you really? Yeah, I never had one. Oh, wow. I got laid off after I did it. Oh, wow. The you and Bargo and everything. Wow. I went out for a Trans Am. Oh wow! <laughs> I like that car. It was very. It, it, I've been wanting to get a fastback. I got a notch. Oh, you got the notch back? Yeah, I get Yeah, mine was uh, mine was a fastback. It was like really nice. I couldn't turn it down. Okay. Because I've been looking. And couldn't find it. Right. Yeah. It had the V8. You, the manual or automatic? Oh, yeah. It's automatic. Okay. All right. <laughs> I drove my stick down today. It's a little. Okay. When I got this car, it was a manual. I think I was 19. I had no idea how to drive a manual. I just had this concept in my mind because. Back then, it, 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 the trucker movies were out, so I was watching these trucker movies and this double clutching. Oh, the Yeah, convoy. <laughs> so I originally went out and test drove a, a Pinto, and I'm double clutching around the block, and my man looking over like, um, this is not a big rig. You don't have to double clutch. <laughs> so, but hey. Jumped in and had the concept in my mind how to drive a stick and, and took off. And took off. All right. Back during the fuel embargo, my sister got a pin to oh, stick. Yeah. And in New Jersey, it was every other day to buy gas. <laughs> she just, she get out of the car. She had gas stations all around the building and everything on the street. And she'd get out and tell the people in front of her and the people behind her. She didn't know how to drive stick. Oh, wow. Uh. <laughs> so they stayed there just to Wow. Uh. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she learned. Because all of my Mustangs, I had the 75, I had the 88 GT, and now I've got this 2011. All of them are sticks. That's the only way to drive a Mustang. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, it's a battle. It's yeah. uh, harder and harder. <laughs> all righty. Can you sign that one too? Oh, sure. Yeah. All righty. And I still don't know who gave me these two. <laughs> um, it wasn't me. I, can say that. I know which car I picked. Very nice car, but I picked the different. All righty. All right. So obviously, being a young guy around, you're still working at Ford. I'm still at Ford. All right. Yeah, All right. I, I, actually, I just finished up um, a, a stint on Mustang. I just changed jobs recently. So okay. My All right. last big program was the 2021 Mach 1. And a little bit of the next car coming out. All right. I'm doing some SEMA work now. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That ought to be fun. It was fun. That's why I saw it. <laughs> Up. I'm like, oh, I mean, yeah, I yeah. Yep. don't come around very often. So. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've worked on every Mustang since I started. Uh, and that was where? 2000? Yeah, okay. S95, S107, S550. There was an SBT, was a great performance. Wow. Was, it's been a great career. That'll work. That'll work. Two of my bosses are here. So yeah. I can, <laughs> that's why I got it at that table. So you, I can get them. Yeah, <laughs> All righty, now. Nice talking to you. The monetary contributions of individual contributors and is brought to you by the Tuskegee Airmen National Museum, Detroit chapter of Tuskegee Airmen Incorporated, and Detroit Red Tail. Donate and help keep Red Tail rolling the Tuskegee Airmen into the American car culture.